In the beginning was the word, and the word was recession. There was nothing. All was darkness. Turn on the friggin' lights. I can't see it. Jesus thing. <laughs> and God said, let there be light. Not all this. You pay your light bill, buddy. What do you think? Light grows on trees? There's only one way to get the truth out of Newfoundland light and power, and I'm it. Yeah, well, I'm the power company, and I says that we want a rate increase. Hide! Hide! light bills up to Quebec and turn up the friggin' heat. What kind of summer is this? What froze the ditch? What a crowd he died for. God is in for a hard week. And God created the havens and the hurt, and it was good. And between the havens and the hurt, he created the outports, and it was good. And to people the outports, he created the Bayman, and it was not bad. And then he created Sin City, that it might have dominion over the outports. And the people of the outports came to the city, but they started going through the green lights without waiting for the arrows. And God said, you can take the boys from the bay, but you can't teach them nothing. And then I created Andy Wells. Well, even God had bad days. <laughs> Let there be all manner of fish and fowl, creatures great and small, which roam the earth looking for their stamps. Keep rolling, we're almost on the mort. <laughs> and let there be land and sea. But the CBC said no shagging way. <laughs> Then let there be game, and game wardens, and game shows, moose and salmon, creatures which taste good when they're drawn and quartered. But no hunting on Sunday. I'm not a hunter, I'm with the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary, right? I just got me grade 11 and I'm trying to figure out why Dad gave me a pair of steel-toed boots. <laughs> and they shoots a foot. <laughs> but hallelujah! Still the Lord prevailed. He decided to create man in his own image. And when he was finished, he said, I think I'll call him Adam, he said, because he got the biggest kink iron I ever seen in my life. And he said, Adam, he said, go ye forth and multiply, but you better do it quick for Mulroney cuts off the baby bonus. <laughs> Two times two is four. Four times four is sixteen. Ten times forty-two is me UIC. <laughs> Why, this multiplying is not all it's cracked up to be. Lots of tail now. <laughs> Come on, Eve girl, let's get up in the woods and get begetting. I suppose you're going to tell me that's six. Yeah. Who are you going to satisfy with that? Me. <laughs> That's about the size of it. Oh, my well, God! I... It's that snake Fraser march! <laughs> Never fear, Fraser is here. <laughs> I've got a sign for you. What, a sign from heaven? No, a picket sign. <laughs> And the Lord knew that his people had talked with the serpent, and he said, You dirty little weasels. Go on, get, 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 get on out of it. From this time onward, thou art banished from the government of Eden. I knew we shouldn't have listened to that snake, Fraser. Well, he told us he was going to take care of us. Well, where is he now? Gone to the bank. <laughs> Never fear, Fraser is here. Here. This is for you. 
Rock, if we hadn't listened to you, we wouldn't have been kicked out of the government of Eden. Never mind that. Just give me all your money and I'll see what I can do. <laughs> it was the year that the Garden of Eden collapsed, and so did the fishery. And the Lord thy God lost his patience, and he dropped an angel down on top of him, and I'm some friggin' glad twouldn't me, too. I just flew in. My wings are beat to a snot. <laughs> now look where I am, perched on top of a light pole. See? I told God if he didn't pay the light bill, there was going to be a snarl up. I hate being an angel anyway, ever since all the restraints and the layoffs. Do you ever have your wings caught back? <laughs> I don't know how anybody survives down here. I flew in and I pitched on top of an overpass, and the next thing I knew, there was 20 moose hunters shooting at me from out of the back of a pickup truck. <laughs> Jeez, just my luck to fly in on a Sunday. <laughs> Hello, folks, Tony Bowen here for Bean Cake Carpet. <laughs> now, folks, we got a brand new shipment of miracle carpets just in from the Holy Land, right, son? That's right, Dad. These carpets are a real godsend. <laughs> now, folks, I bet you're asking yourself right now, what makes these carpets such a miracle? I bet they are, Dad. Well, son. <laughs> Well, son, the miracle is a low, 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 low prices. How low, Dad? How low, son? <laughs> yes, folks, we have eliminated the middleman just to bring you a great deal. That's right, folks. We have eliminated the wholesaler, the retailer, the distributor, the seller. We've even eliminated the manufacturer. <laughs> the manufacturer, Dad? That's right, son, so nobody pays no taxes on nothing. Dad, that's nuts! No, son, that's the miracle. Folks... We ain't selling these beauties by the yard or by the foot. We're selling them for the low, low price of three cents an inch. An inch, Dad? That's right, folks. Don't bring your measurements in. We don't need them. We ain't selling carpet. We're only selling carpet fiber. Do Mom know about this, Dad? That's right, folks. Finally, in the privacy of your own home, you can weave your own goddamn carpet. <laughs> joke, right, Dad? No, son, it's a miracle. So, folks, come on into B&K Carpets and see me, Tony Bowen. Or me, Tony Bowen's only begotten son. <laughs> or our sales lady, Amazing Grace. Some deal, Dad. <laughs> Some deal, son. A poem by Henry Gibson. <clears throat> Whose woods these are, I do not know. I think I'll cut a truckload, though. <laughs> I'm Colleen Thornbrew for CBC News. Welcome to our four-part series on the Confederation building called Inside the Mental. <laughs> in part one of our series, we will meet Nurse Cliff Hatchett, who's going to take us on a guided tour of the House of Assembly Ward. Due to the graphic nature of tonight's program, child guidance is advised when viewing. And now, Nurse Cliff Hatchett. Hi, I'm Nurse Hatchett, head nurse. <laughs> I've been working here in the mental. They like to call it Confederation Building now. I've been working here for the past 25 years, and let me tell you, some crazy spot. I'd, well, why don't I just show you? See uh, this one? I want to be. Uh, uh, I want to be. Um, I want to be. That's Lenny Sims. <laughs> He came in from Grand Falls there a few years ago. That was the Grand Falls millstone he had around his neck. <laughs> sure, he was on the verge of getting out there last year, and he went and signed himself back in all of his own accord. Oh, that one. Hubie Kitchen. 
thinks he's artistic. <laughs> Four times three is seven. Seven times two is 45 million. <laughs> oh no, he'll never get out. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's Chrissy Decker. <laughs> Walked all the way in from Roddington, he did. Walked straight to the head of the line, through the doors, sat down and haven't moved since. <laughs> Me blood test. <laughs> oh, be careful. Get back, get back. This one's dangerous. Billy Hogan. <laughs> Got what you call an obsessive tick personality. Thinks everybody's covered with ticks. If he goes near him, he'll punch out and claim he was only trying to kill the ticks. <laughs> oh, oh, just listen to this one. Paul Dix. <laughs> You don't understand. You don't know what it's like. It all started when I was in school with the Christian brothers, right? I felt dirty all the time, you know? Sometimes I'd be in the shower for like a day. All day. And then it got worse when I went into the seminary, right? I mean, sometimes I'd be in the shower for two days at a time just trying to get clean, you know? I just felt dirty all the time. And now I'm in the government and... And it's like everything is sticking to me all the time. It's like I, I can't get clean, you know? I gotta wash my hands of everything out, out damn spot. It's like I can't get clean, you know? It's like, like, like what happened at the Brittany Inn, right? I mean, I couldn't deal with that. I had to wash my hands of that, right? And get a commission from Ontario to deal with it, right? I mean, I don't want to deal with anything. I want to wash my hands of everything, you know? Like Murphy and Lawler and McCarthy, right? They had to get away with it. Or I would have had to take a lie bath, right? Oh, I'm telling you, that's why I had to quit as Minister of Justice. Because you can't be clean and be Minister of Justice in this province. Don't worry, he's supposed to be getting out next month. His wife's going to take care of him. Yeah. Oh, no. No, no. None of them was ever committed here. They all wants to be here. And get this, they gets paid for it. <laughs> See, everything was fine in the Garden of Eden. But the people, you know, they got into trouble because they were out begetting around all the time. My dear, every time you turned around, there was someone dropping a fig leaf. Everybody used to sit around all summer and pray for fall. And there was youngsters, <laughs> youngsters running around everywhere. But then the women realized that all the begetting around was caused by men and their resurrections. Because, you know... Because, <laughs> you know... That's all they thinks about, men, right? They, they wakes up with a resurrection every morning and they... <laughs> and, and they goes to bed with one every night. And then the men all got really paranoid because they were afraid someone else's resurrection was bigger. And they... <laughs> And they started wearing really big fig leaves, so everybody think they had a big resurrection, even if they didn't. <laughs> and then the women all got resurrection envy. And that's the truth, so help me God. Night and Bryce, here for the wonderful Newfoundland outdoors. How's she going, boys? Lloyd! Uh, Don't you go starting in already, Bryce. Look, go over there and start a fire or something. But Lloyd! We've been cancelled. We're unemployed now. <laughs> Look, old man, I'm going to cancel you if you don't quit butting in. Then and see that cancel, but they made a comeback. Now, we're going to do the same. That's right, Lloyd. Boy, you're always right. Of course I am. That goes without saying. Now, tonight's programme is all about moments. Special moments. Special moments between me. And that's all say like men. <laughs> yes, Brooks. We're men. We're big, bad, smelling ugly, hairy ass muffle head men. <laughs> and that's what tonight's special program is all about, ladies and gentlemen. The sensitive moments between males such as us. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> what are you looking at me like that for, alive? Like what, Bryce, old man? That glint in your eye. <laughs> no, no. I got this all figured out now, you see. I was over to CBC figuring out how we're going to get our program back on the air. Anyway, I heard tell that they got this big shot producer over there. God almighty, wake him, they call him, right? His favorite magazine is Shet Lane's. So I bought a copy and read up on it. And there's an article in there that's going to do us a world of good. It's on male banding. Male what? Male banding. I'd rather be moose hunting, Lloyd. <laughs> I got it all memorized. Now what we're supposed to do. First thing you gotta do, you see, is find a nice secluded spot off in the woods, just like this, and then you shucks off all your clothes right down to the skivvies. Lloyd! <laughs> now come on, Bryce, now you want to be a man, don't you shuck him? No way, Lloyd! Yeah, come on, get naked, Bryce! Lloyd! No, 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 Lloyd! All the moose and squirrels are watching! Get, shuck him up! Come on, get no on. way, Lloyd! You're a fat boy! <laughs> This minute. Come on! If you don't come back here, I'll tell everybody what that big black bear done to you up there when I catch a skinny dipping up back at Gamble last year. <laughs> oh, what a story. Folks, you see, Price was out in the park. <laughs> I knew that would get him back. Look. <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> oh. What we got here, you see, Bryce, is a, is a what? A gathering of males. Now, the first thing we're supposed to do is uh, reach deep down on the inside of ourselves and find a sleeping wild man that lies hidden there. Now, when I call out the name of an animal, we're going to pretend that we are that animal, all right? But Lloyd, we already are animals. We're Newfoundland men. We love to kill and eat seals and snare moose and rip the lips off partridge. Over here, old man, I'm gonna rip the lips off you if you don't cooperate. I'm sorry, Lloyd. Yes, now, I'm gonna call out the name of an animal and then we are gonna pretend that we are that animal. Let's try the first one now, is that? A lion, all right? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Pity for all that. Pity. All right, let's try something else. Kangaroo. Kangaroo what? A room. 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 Kangaroo. Ha. Look. Ha. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> to do, you see? Get right back to our primitive true selves. All right, let's try something closer to home, all right? Uh, let's be moose. Oh, my, if there's anything I was ever meant to be, you know, it's a moose. <laughs> Running free up in the gaff capsules, huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Stash, dear love. <laughs> well, I had to do it, see. I'm scared to death what might come out of my mouth, right? Well, you gotta be careful these days, see. 
all year now I, I've been politically correct. You know, I said the right things about the right people and the right causes, right? But, uh, you know, you got to be politically correct or else, you know, they're liable to push into the mental. Oh, my jeez. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to say mental. I, I meant to say uh, uh, Waterford Hospital for Nervous Disorders. <laughs> See, you don't know. It's like, all year I've been good. I've been keeping it in. I've been keeping it tight. But lately, it's like I got this urge to, to, to say stuff, you know? It's like a big surge inside of me, like, whoop! <laughs> <laughs> it's like I got Tourette syndrome or something, right? <laughs> Packy! Oh! <laughs> I keep wanting to say things like kike, you know, nigger, noofie. <laughs> How many noofies does it take that to screw in a light bulb? Four, one the whole light bulb, three to turn them around. <laughs> oh, God, that feels good. <laughs> hey, you know what? I think Anita Hill is a crybaby. And if Clarence Thomas is a hung judge and wants to go around bragging about his equipment, it's a free country. <laughs> oh, I'm on a roll now. <laughs> and what about Beeman, eh? <laughs> oh, what about Buddy in Grand Falls, the blind fella, wants a moose hunting license? <laughs> Why don't we give him a driver's license? <laughs> God knows you're taking your life in your hands when you go in the woods now, and all of them can see. <laughs> what about the economically disadvantaged, eh? Well, if you tell me they're too goddamn lazy to work, they should be cut off, cut back, taxed to debt, and let out to starve like the rest of us. <laughs> oh, God, this feels great. <laughs> What's all this Inno and Inuit nonsense, eh? Why can't we just call them Indians and Eskimos like we always did? <laughs> and Princess Anne looks like a horse. <laughs> fuss anyway. What's all the fuss about the orphans? Sure they've been at that ever since the clergy were invented. We should take a line from Charles Dickens on orphans. All they ever do is ask for more. <laughs> My God, what am I saying? <laughs> Speaking of asking for more, what about women? Hmm? Ah, babes. Girls, broads, right? <laughs> I went down the store the other day. I said, can I have a pack of players, my love? She gave me a whack right across the side of me. <laughs> this wasn't a woman, see, this was a person. <laughs> well, they're all persons now, right? They're fisher persons, chair persons, garbage persons, fire persons. I am the egg person, Coco Cacho! <laughs> Walking down Water Street, there's a council worker down the person hall. <laughs> and tell me this, why isn't there a status of persons council? Hmm? A persons enterprise bureau? Hmm? No, because they want to have their cake and eat it too. <laughs> Just like the frogs. <laughs> well, that's it. I suppose I'm single-handedly responsible for the breakup of Canada now. <laughs> and what about Joey Smallwood, eh? Why didn't they wake him upside down in the coffin? At least then everybody could kiss his ass just like they did when he was alive.
Oh, God, it's good to get that off my breast. I mean... I mean off my chest. Oh, I'm good for another year now. Ah, see you next year. Luke, he bought a brand new boat, aha, me boys. Luke, he bought a brand new boat, he needed fish to stay afloat, aha, aha, me riddle I day. Luke, he knelt and prayed to God, aha, me boys. Luke, he knelt and prayed to God, he get a quota for northern cod, aha, aha, me riddle I day. He went to 2J3KL, aha, me boys. Went to 2J3KL, nothing there but ice and swell, aha, aha, me riddle I day. Said he go to 3 and oh, aha, me boys. Said he go to 3 and oh, Crosby told him not to go, aha, aha, me riddle I day. But Luke, he said to hell with you, aha, me boys. Luke, he said to hell with you and Richard Cashman, the Union, too. Aha, aha, me riddle I day. So Luke, he's on the Virgin Rocks, aha, me boys. Luke, he's on the Virgin Rocks, and what he saw was quite a shock. Aha, aha, me riddle I day. There's boats from Russia, France, and Spain, aha, me boys. Boats from Russia, France, and Spain, trawlers, draggers, and first names, aha, aha, me riddle I day. Oh, says Lukey, I don't care, aha, me boys. No, says Lukey, I don't care, the DFO won't find me here, aha, aha, me riddle I day. But Lukey's longliner was caught, aha, me boys. Lukey's longliner was caught, they left the foreigners on the spot, aha, aha, me riddle I day. They brought Lukey back to port, aha, me boys. They brought Lukey back to port, took his fishing in the court, aha, aha. his boat and gear, aha, me boys. Then they took his boat and gear, and Lukey, now he's on welfare, aha, aha, me riddle I day. So Brian Mulrooney got his wish, aha, me boys. Brian Mulrooney got his wish, he won't let a Newfoundlander fish, aha, aha, me riddle I day. <laughs> How's it going, Nick? Oh, not too bad, special ed. I just finished the gig up to the Arts and Culture Center, see? Listen, Ed. Ah. You heard all this talk about Quebec wanting to separate? No, my son, I never heard a thing. <laughs> Listen to the news or what? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Here and now, every night, but I suffer from a news retention problem, see? <laughs> I was just wondering how they were going to go about it, you know. Uh, sure they can't separate anyway, boy. Why not? I'm sure Labrador would be an island then. You can't have two big islands in the same province, you know that. <laughs> I was just wondering how, you know. How they're going to do it. Yeah. These boys too big to float down to St. Lawrence, I know that. <laughs> Northwest Passage? Nah, too big, boy. They have to log it out piece by piece, I suppose. Jeez, imagine the work into that. Imagine the stamps you'd get. <laughs> so, Ed. Yes, Special Ed. You think we should let her go or what? <coughs> I think we should let her go for a little while. How long, you figure? Fourteen weeks. <laughs> Long enough to get me stamped, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, you're some smart, special ed boy. You're some smart. Yeah. Besides. Besides what? You know what they says? No, what do they say? If you love something, set it free. <laughs> if it comes back, it's yours. <laughs> what about if we don't? Fuck it. This is Larry Hart. 
Reporting for CBC News. <laughs> Today we're in Placentia Bay, <laughs> where local resident Mr. Phineas Wessel has finally come forward after six months of hiding and declared that he is indeed the winner of the $5.2 million <laughs> in the Lotto 649. Well, Mr. Whistle, you certainly had us in suspense. Yes, Larry, boy, I had you on the go, didn't I? <laughs> Mr. Whistle, many Newfoundlanders are wondering why you waited for so long before coming forward. Were you afraid of all the media attention it would garner? Uh, no, Larry, boy, I don't mind the cameras at all, right? Uh, no, mind them. It was rumoured that you were going through a divorce proceeding at the time. Was this your fear about your wife's settlement? Uh, no, Larry, boy, I'm not married, you know. It's only me and mom, eh? <laughs> I, I, I'd probably get married now, though, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, was your concern about the number of people who would descend upon you looking for their share of the pie? No, Larry boy, I believe in shared wealth. You know, I believe in shared wealth. Then why did you wait for so long? Well, Larry, it's an awful lot of money, you know. And uh, I had me UI claim going, you know. I didn't want to put it up. from the book of trepidations. And so it came to pass that even though he managed to fill the Bay Arena in Bay Roberts with 4,000 faithful, the man they knew as John the Effortless <laughs> was banished from the cabinet of Clyde and cast into a life on the back benches. Poor John the Effortless. He wandered the shores of Port de Grave, pondering heavily upon his fate. It hurts. <laughs> fired. To be fired. I was so happy. I wanted fisheries, but even so, oh, woe is me. To be fired. Now I'm just an empty vessel awash on the sea of life. Why me, Kwai? Isn't that pitiful? <laughs> and then John the Effortless cast his eyes on the water support to grave, and he caught sight of some lonely fishermen who had neither fish. And then John the Effortless was struck by lightning. He was struck dumb, and never before had John the Effortless been at a loss for words. So, lightning had to strike him again. And then he uttered his first word. Bishop Persons. And then it all came into his head like in a great big flood, and he looked at the fisher people who had gathered around him, and they said... Suffer it be so now, little fisher persons. But it don't have to be like this. There's lots of fish in three and all. <laughs> For I am the fisher king. And I will utter secrets that have been kept from the very foundation of the fisher person. Help us, Mr. Apple, help us, boy. We got nothing. All we got is a loaf of stale mammy's bread. And it didn't be any sausages. <laughs> Don't worry, my little fisherman. I mean fisher persons. I will save you from the gobble guts of washer. How are you going to save us, Mr. Effort? Take out your little weenuts. <laughs> Now, my little 
fisher persons and all Newfoundlanders go forth unto the waters of the three and all. And what the Lord has taken away, he now giveth back. Cast your nets into the waters of three and all. And so the fisher people cast their nets into the waters of three and all, and it was really amazed at all the fish they were getting. It wasn't very long, though, before word spread across the land, and pretty soon, John the Crosby on high and his scribes, Richard the Cashin of Unions and Walter the Wimp of Fisheries, were camped out on John's doorstep. Ha! What manner of man is this, that even my own rabble-rousing fishermen obey him? What have we to do with thee, old vanished one, thou backbencher? Art thou come hither to tarmat and stir up shit? <laughs> and then, John the Crosby on high spoke loudly from his perch. Well, if I'd wanted to make friends, I never would have taken this job in the first place. <laughs> oh, ye of wittle faith, why are ye fearful? Beware, O oh faithful fishermen of my district, of false prophets that come wearing jeans and cashmere sweaters, but who are really only backbenchers with the gift of gab. was washed away on the briny ocean tide. Help! Still waiting for the day when Clyde would invite him back into the big boat. And from time to time, you can still see him bobbing up and down on the ocean, waving around this video cassette. Clyde! Clyde remembered a bay of wiener in Bay Wabbits. 4,000 faithful Clyde. You have tears in your eyes, and I have the videotape to prove it. Then sinks my soul, now Clyde's pissed off with me. How vain thou art, contrary far. A recent survey has indicated that Newfoundlanders are the sexiest people in Canada. <laughs> that is to say that Newfoundlanders have more sex more often than anyone else in Canada. In Newfoundland, 85% say yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Please. Here to shed some light on this startling revelation is an average Newfoundland couple, Ronnie and Ramona Riggs. Uh, Ronnie, to what do you attribute this amazing statistic? I'm Randy. 
That's a good start, yes. No, no, my name is Randy, not Ronnie. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> sorry, Randy. <laughs> Randy, would you say that you and your wife fall into these statistics we are talking about? Oh, yes, 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 boy. I have sex at least six times a day. Woohoo! <laughs> With you. You call that six? Well, what would you call it? Hockey night in Canada. <laughs> he shoots, he scores, he falls asleep. Ramona, we're on the CBC, girl. At least the hockey players works off a sweat before he puts it in the net. <laughs> Buddy, turn off that camera. Turn it off. Well, folks, there you have it. In Newfoundlanders have more sex. <laughs> more often than anywhere else in Canada because Newfoundlanders have it more quickly than anywhere else in Canada. Arthur Rizzori for CBC News. <laughs> Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Yes, my child. And what are your sins? I'm afraid my client can't answer that. <laughs> Brian Mulrooney is nothing but a shaggy taste horny toad lawyer and his pants are on fire, so there. Right on! That's one thing I knows for sure. I'm staying out till I gets what I want. Right on, brother. Solidarity. We got to stick together like worms <laughs> under a rock. Yes, because I'm as good as any worm on this rock. They can force us back to work, but by God, there won't be any work done. Yes, that's one thing I knows for sure. I won't be doing any work. <laughs> Taking it anymore! I'm not getting it anymore! We want job security! Imagine freezing our wages and open theirs! Yeah, up theirs! <laughs> yeah, I don't know why this says civil servants don't do no work, my dear. I'm on work overload! I've been loaded a few times myself! <laughs> Pacified! It don't make no sense! Wages going down, inflation going up. Sure, I'm blowing up like a number four football. Yeah, it won't do you no good. They got the outhouse parked up on Signal Hill. Yes, and I'm sick and tired of going through the bowels of the building trying to find a place to have a smoke. I'm sick and tired of going through the bowels of the house looking for a smoke. <laughs> come the next election. Yes, from one day to the next, sure you don't know if you're going to be working. Yes, that's one thing I'm secure about. <laughs> I won't be working for the next 13 weeks. <laughs> how do you know how long we're going to be on strike? I don't. I'm here to get me on employment check. What are you here for? <laughs> $762 for the mortgage, $75 for Newfoundland Power, $117 for the goddamn phone bill, and I'm going to kill Charlotte when I get a hold of her. $110 to have coal for the washer and dryer, $75 to Leon's for the couch, the cat I already pissed on. $402 to have so 
Old Trust for the Care Herald already rent around the late pole. <laughs> 90 for the water tax, 238 for the property tax, 200 for the groceries, no meat again this week. 50 the visa, 45 Canadian tar, and 14 the dollars. That's $2,178 this week. Thanks be to Jesus, they got rid of that school tax. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly, look at that, an angel on top of the light pole. <laughs> Dead. Stay off the homebrew, boy. Cut <laughs> the Jesus off here now and get me down off this light pole. What are you doing up there on top of that light pole? I got me wires crossed. Yes, my dear, I got my wires crossed too. Ever since they laid me off down to the shipyard. Yeah, well... I'm the Angel Gabby, and I got a message for you, Noah, from the big guy. You're not one of them Salvation Army crowd, are you? <laughs> Did she some cute? Can I keep her? Oh, God, this worst job I had since I was a tooth fairy. <laughs> Listen, I got a message for you from the big guy. He says... It repenteth me that I have made ye. Ye are all corrupt. The end draweth neareth. What does that mean? It means he's really pissed off, and now you're in for it. <laughs> and Noah, you got to build an ark, because he's going to make it rain for 40 days and 40 nights. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> You got to build an ark. Well, is this going to be a make work project? <laughs> no, it's a straight contract. What do that mean? You mean we got to put a tender in? If we do, we're sunk by goddamn Norwegians. <laughs> That's what got us into this mess in the first place. No, listen, look, if I wanted Norwegians, I would have gone to see Chuck Fury. You think I got a pole up my ears? <laughs> You can't just go build an ark, you know. What do you think, wood grows on trees? <laughs> I mean, you can't go cutting on crown land. You get fined for that. No, listen, I've got something here that's going to take care of all your problems. What's that? An application for an ACOA grant. It would take us three years to fill that out. <laughs> no, listen, the big guy got connections, right? He called in a favor, and he got you an appointment to see... John Crosby. I thought that's who the big guy was. <laughs> what do you think this is, my son of fairy tale? Look, you get cracking, or I'm gonna come down there and crack you with my miracle whip. God did. She's some sassy. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ever we get married, live in common law? <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have come out of the wood pile today. And so Noah built his ark, and the big guy welcomed him up to the promised land. On that dark and dirty morning when the last codfish is caught And on its way to Russia, France, or Spain And when the feds have finally given away the whole damn lot And no more dole comes from up yonder to ease the pain When the dole stops coming from up yonder When Mulroney makes another blow Again. When Mulroney pulls the plug and transfer payments are no more, the future breaks eternal bleak and bare. You run out of unemployment and you head across the straits. When no more dole comes from up yonder, we'll all be there. When the dole stops coming from up yonder, when Mulroney makes another blunder, when the country is torn right aside. Start they can get you out the country from the dawn till setting sun. The Tories try to convince us that they care. And when Mulroney's chosen, start to divvy up the pie. And no more dough comes from up yonder to us down here. When the dough stops coming from up yonder, when Mulroney. I'm